Welcome, welcome back to another episode of Uploaded Unfiltered, the podcast in which I, your host, Crip, interviews another content creator in regards to their content journey thus far. Tonight, I have a special guest, and as always, I'm going to read her bio, introduce her, and get this conversation started. My guest tonight is Blaze at Midnight. Blaze is a casual Dragon Queen VTuber who enjoys art, gaming, tech, her hubby Raihan. Yes, that Raihan from Pokemon. She generally streams a variety of games such as action adventure, platformers, JRPGs, indies, narratives, and during her birthday, only retro games she grew up with. Her content consists of her playing games or holding chats with her community in the hopes of bringing some laughter, positivity, and entertainment to those who enjoy a bit of -of out-of-pocket humor and laid-back vibes. Without further ado, I'd like to introduce Blaze to the podcast. Blaze, welcome to Uploaded Unfiltered. What's goody? I'm so glad that you invited me here. Yeah, yo, no problem at all. I'm glad that you were able to do it. And I'm sorry I stumbled through your uh, bio there. It's late and I didn't sleep today. So that's my excuse. No, no worries. Life be life and sometimes. (laughs) Well, Blaze, I got to ask you. I've been asking everybody. This is my new question of the podcast. What? What is Blaze's origin story when it comes to content creation? I have no idea, and I'm I'm dying to know. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, man. So this might be a long one, I'll I'll be honest. So my intro to content creation started off with, I want to say, just watching YouTube thrive, in a Mm -hmm. sense. Eventually, I navigated my way to watching people like The Game Grumps, Jacksepticeye, Markiplier and a couple of other like gaming uh, let's players. Um, one of them also being Matt, a uh, manly badass mm-hmm. hero who does a lot of like horror indie games. Okay. And after watching some of their content, I was like, I would like to curate a community of my own where I get to showcase, you know, games that people may not know right off the bat or just, you know, find like minds like me mm-hmm. essentially. And so, I started off with YouTube and trying to create something that I guess people could laugh at and also enjoy. And that video never saw the light of day. What? No, (laughs) it never saw the light of day. I recorded, I spent hours recording myself, uh, swapping into different attire and just talking with like, you know, bringing a channel to the YouTube Mm -hmm. platform that I was trying to, build and that video never saw the light of day i edited it and everything and i just never uploaded it because i was just like i can't i don't know where it is (laughs) if i do (laughs) oh that's wild i have no clue where it is if i do um but after that um one of the biggest things that kind of got me into content creation after watching so many of the bigger let's players do their thing was I came across a IRL friend by the name of Lunar Bunny, I think is what they go by now. And so um, they streamed Persona 5 one day and I was in the process of uploading Persona 5 uh, playthroughs on YouTube Mm -hmm. and just me just doing voiceovers after that. And so I saw on Facebook that they were live on Twitch and I hopped in their Twitch stream. Um, and it was my first time, you know, being on Twitch and just kind of like seeing what the areas, like the feel was like for their stream. Mm-hmm. And I ended up liking that space because it kind of gave people a place to sort of communicate back and forth with one another and also the streamer themselves right. when it came to gaming. And so, once I saw how friendly and open that they were, I decided to jump onto content creation myself by just, uh, I didn't have a camera at the time. I think I only had like a mic. Mm-hmm. And so I put, I plugged in my mic to my PC and then booted up Mario Kart uh, 8 on the Switch. <laughs> and that was my first game that I streamed on Twitch. Nice. Um, and I got like maybe a few viewers to come in from there. And after that, it just kind of rocketed off from there. Gotcha. Okay. Well, you know what? Because I know where your content is now. Do you mind speaking on the transition from, I guess, a flush tuber to a VTuber? (laughs) 
I would love to. So as you know, after my early stages of no cam, I did dive into cam streams Mm -hmm. and I enjoyed them pretty much a lot up until the point where I had to balance work life with stream life and it just wasn't meshing really well because the one thing that I noticed when it came to cam streams is just like, you kind of have to put on a face right. that, uh, to your audience. I know a lot of people may not wear makeup or anything of that nature, but I always wanted to look my best when it came to presenting myself on camera, when it came to uh, streaming my content. Mm-hmm. And all the way up until I want to say uh, it was 2021, maybe, if not 2022, it might've been a summer 2022, actually. I had gotten to a point where I no longer loved seeing myself on camera due to a lot of issues that I kind of dealt with um, in terms of body positivity, um, my facial features. And it's just like, I was also going through a period um, in my job where my boss at the time wasn't very uh, welcoming of my presence. And so I was kind of like in a sort of depressed state Mm -hmm. um, between work life and also just trying to bring some life to my stream and some sort of like relaxation to my life. But I had gotten to the point where my boss who was coming down on me and just basically demeaning me in, you know, less than stellar ways that I won't, you know, tell you guys Mm -hmm. on a public platform. um, But it got to the point where it's just like, even on the weekends, I couldn't really feel like I could relax and be myself because he had that mindset of, you know, work, 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 work. Right. And so that's when I started kind of transitioning it over into VTubing because earlier on that year, um, I saw a creator called Onsta Monsta who um, dove into VTubing. And it's like, I heard the term go uh, go around and I thought VTubing was more so in relation to people behind an avatar who strictly did content on YouTube right. or like did some sort of like video blogging or anything of that nature. And then finally somebody said, oh no, it's like, you know, Vocaloids and the uh, Hololive people, which I heard their names before as well. And I was like, I don't know what that is. I just see avatars and digital people dancing. I don't know what that is. But once I came across <laughs> Onsta Monsta and I saw their stream on Twitch, I was like, oh, this looks like fun. I would love to do this. Yeah. And so I had commissioned them because they were also an artist themselves um, to do a live 2D um, model for me. And I didn't know what live 2D was at the time. Okay. I just knew I needed like the art, but she said she only did the art, but not the rigging. And I was like, I don't know what rigging is, mm-hmm. um, but it is what it is. And so I just commissioned them. They were working on it for roughly about like a year or so. Okay. Um, and between that point in time, I started doing PNG, what's called PNG tubing, which is also V tubing. Okay. But instead of having like a moving avatar, you would have a static image on screen um, that you could hook into technology, like a website called Fuji Tech, mm-hmm. where it'll pick up your uh, audio from your mic. Yeah. And it'll just bounce up and down and oh, just kind of highlight or okay. disappear. So in case you were, you know, not comfortable with being on cam, you could boot that up, hop into Discord um, voice chat and just have that glow on and off. And still you're interacting with your community just behind a still image. Um, So I started doing that because I didn't have a model in the works, but also between that time after I got on the monsters model, I was like, I don't know who I'm going to find to rig this because I never dabbed and in, dabbled into live 2D. Um, I don't know how to get the model moving. And mm-hmm. that is when a few months down the road, after speaking with another friend, Jeliana867, they showed me Love Mora, who is my current VTuber model mama uh, <laughs> in the terms of in, in terms of VTubing. They relate, they relate to, uh, when I use the term mom or dad, uh-huh. it relates to the person who actually created the model and rigged the model. Gotcha. So 
Love Mora um, did the art in rigging of my model and how I got into meeting them and also getting them to rig my model was Jeliana had introduced me to them. I had commissioned them for my P and G model. Uh, and so when I saw how that turned out, I was like, oh my God, this looks amazing. And in between that time, they were a chibi VTuber at the time. So they were chibi live 2D VTuber gotcha. that was working on their first full body, uh, you know, model yeah. looking live 2D VTuber. Wow. And so I watched them go through that process of rigging the hair and rigging the body and rigging the head movements. Oh and I was goodness. like, oh, this is dope. And so she finally opened up her first set of like, you know, live 2D commissions in terms of taking on a batch instead of like one or two. I shot my shot, even though I already had Ansta Monsta's model on the back burner. Right. And after she took in commissions thinking, you know, oh, I'm not going to get in. And even if I don't, you know, I at least have Ansta Monsters to fall back on and I just need to find somebody to rig it. Right. And so after she closed commissions and she came up to me, she was like, hey, did you want X, Y, and Z for your model? I'm like, oh my God, are you serious? <laughs> it's like, it felt like I won the lotto. Oh, that's awesome. And I was just like... <laughs> I wasn't expecting you to pick me, but I really do appreciate it. Hell and yeah. so they ended up, you know, rigging my model after I gave them the go ahead of, you know, building, putting together an art and model. Mm -hmm. But in between that time, that's when I picked up Live 2D Cubism, which is the tool that a lot of VTuber um, artists use to rig and make the model move back and forth and do all the fancy bells and whistles where it looks like a 2d image is moving in a 3d plane yes. so mm -hmm. that's that's when i i just shot my shot decided to rig on the monsters model because i was oh, wow. like i want to go ahead and dive into this yeah i was just like i'm tired of cam <laughs> streams i don't want to be on cam anymore mm -hmm. i need to get a model right away because i know people one of the things that people commented about me when it came to content creation and being on cam is they love my expressions yeah. i'm a very animated person i make so many facial expressions on stream when it comes to being surprised caught off guard or just laughing and enjoying life and so in the course of a month and a half it was my first stab at rigging and i did it that's and awesome i was i managed to put together a moving model that moved relatively well even though it had its fair share of gotchas <laughs> that i had to overcome <laughs> yeah and i debuted in october and I got a lot of love, including from Love Mora, who came out to my stream debut mm -hmm. when I, I debuted my first VTuber model. And since then, I've just been really happy. That is awesome. That, you know what? That is a perfect segue into current mindset. You mentioned that your content that you create is a reflection of how you're feeling at the time. How is your, I guess, what does your current mindset look like as far as your content goes? And do you have a, a through line that you try to keep for your content? Or I guess just to speak on that a little bit. So my current mindset for my content is I thrive off of ideals that people just kind of like throw at me in a sense. Mm -hmm. And even though it's not directly to me, it's just like, I just may see something and immediately I get an idea of being like, I see this, but I'm going to make this better. Okay. In a sense. Mm -hmm. And so one example I can kind of give is like VTuber debuts. For instance, when I did my very first one, I saw a lot of people putting up like, you know, Hey, if you give me, you know, several likes on this photo, I'll unveil like, you know, bits and pieces of my model. And so I did that as well. But in order to tease up to that date, mm -hmm. what I did was like with me being like a smash player, because I've seen so many um, <laughs> silhouettes yes. of like things up, up and coming mm -hmm. when it comes to like a new fighter has appeared. That was the first thing that came to mind where I was just like, I'm a Nintendo, you know, fangirl. Yep. I'm going to go ahead and just throw this splash page up here with a silhouette of my model. And it's just like a new fighter oh, is coming. Awesome. And that was the start of me teasing me going from flesh tuber 
officially to VTubing. Right. And so I did that. I even put together a um, video after I debuted my uh, 1.0 model to where, if you remember Nintendo's trailer of how they, I want to say, either introduced the Splatoon characters or something else in Smash that was kind of shocking and they just kind of showed like the smash ball yeah but it starts off with like the inklings like playing in in the ink like they're shooting each other right and then they they catch a glimpse of like the smash ball in their eye mm. and then you see it like blow up and so what i did was i threw a silhouette of the 2.0 version um of my model yeah in front of the smash ball to where it's just like everybody's looking at that <laughs> and um you know from there i just kind of like uh segued it into um it fading off screen and then just showing like only the eyes of the uh 2.0 model just very faded out yeah and i just have blaze at midnight 2.0 coming soon just scroll up on top of the screen Yo. and that was like one of my first few video editing projects that, that i'm like intense. super proud of because i'm like oh, i love this that sounds like a lot <laughs> so of work <laughs> oh it was it was that was the start to my video editing error so which mm. Since then, I have made many, many, many other inspirational videos, which I don't know where I got the creative genius mindset for, mm -hmm. but my trailer is one of those other ones where the first 10 seconds, mm -hmm. I want to say, of the trailer, all of that was put together in Canva. What? Yes. <laughs> all of that was put together in Canva. Goodness. I literally, I can't remember what terms I searched for, mm -hmm. but I was just looking for bits and pieces of like just elements that just went together. Yeah. And I just started playing with them on like a blank spread to the point where it's just like, okay, this looks nice. And then Canva has like a video editing tool in it where you can time certain elements to appear on screen. And so I made certain ones, you know, like a loading bar appear like at the very end. So that way it's almost like it's loading the model into the screen. Mm -hmm. I timed even like the title of the uh, of the trailer to come in at a certain time after you saw like, you know, it's still trying to process and chug that, you know, hey, Bla uh, Blaze at 2.0 is coming. Yeah. Just so I can kind of give get that build up going before I actually dive into what the model looks like um, wholeheartedly oh um, when goodness. it came to my 2.0 debut. And so I don't know how I pulled that off. Yeah. I'll be honest. I literally just kind of played with shapes hey, and everything. It worked. Canva, and it just, <laughs> it worked. And then I just threw that with the rest of the videos where I just took screenshots of or screen clips mm -hmm. of uh, footage, like B-roll footage of my model awesome. uh, at different angles and different positions and just put that together and just said, yep, that's it. And then the ending was in Canva as well. Oh Cause gosh. I was like, I don't have after effects. <laughs> I'm not going to try and buy after effects, yeah. but I'm going to make it look like I did exactly. something in after effects. I um, listen. I don't think people realize how powerful Canva is. Like it's always yes. been good, and people were like, oh, "I made some thumbnails in it." It was like, "No, you can make full on videos in Canva if you take the time to do it." Absolutely. Oh my gosh! So, well, goodness. But <laughs> yeah, there's. I didn't. I like. I knew there was a lot that goes into VTubing, and especially you just jumping into rigging is wild to me but like the more you talk and the more the conversation goes on it seems like you are one to like if there's something that you need to get done you want to figure it out and get it done like you're not afraid to make that jump i will say i don't publicly announce this but i think of myself as the diy queen only just because i'm just like i don't want to spend money on this uh -huh. and so i'm gonna figure out how to do it myself and just go from there and if i fail at it then you know i learn from that exactly. and just move on that's kind of what i i took with rigging is just like i see the flaws in my first model mm -hmm. and i'm in the process of rigging a friend's model right now where i'm just like i'm not going to make that same mistake again i know how to elevate this and make this look even better mm -hmm. for my friend's model so that's kind of how i look at content creation in a sense where it's just like i'm grateful for the six plus years that I'd spent with flesh tubing, mm -hmm. but 
it's just I found more success and more of like a community that I can co- kind of consider my own mm-hmm. with VTubing. Right. And it just allows me to be, you know, myself and not always having to put on face every day. And it's like, that's one of the greatest things about VTubing is just like, I can literally sit in my pajamas all day and <laughs> no one would know because I'm behind an avatar. Exactly. I'm not going to lie. So, that sounds nice. Yes. It's very nice. I, I'm not gonna lie. I'm gonna look into the uh, PNG too because there are definitely times where I'm like, I want to stream, but I don't mm-hmm. want this camera in my face. I don't want these lights on. I just kind of want to vibe out and just like chit chat with the with the community. So I think I'm just gonna have like an avatar. Just boop. This is me for today. Deal with it. Yeah. <laughs> definitely do that and it's just like because a lot of people will put down png tubing but when you get into v tubing i highly recommend people start png tubing before yeah they try and dish out the funds for a live 2d model or a 3d model mm-hmm. even um because it can get relatively expensive right. for one but two you may dive into v tubing and realize this really isn't for me. Mm-hmm. I actually miss being on cam. And a lot of VTubers jump into the VTubing realm thinking that they're going to gain a lot of success and, you know, a lot, grow a large fan base. But then they get in there and they may not like the community, the drama, because it does have its pros and cons. Right. Like it does with everything else in content creation. Mm-hmm. And they end up just saying, yeah, I'm going to graduate, which is another term to say that I'm going to quit VTubing and do something else. Gotcha. So if you ever hear the term, this VTuber is graduating, that means they're no longer using that model anymore. Gotcha. Okay. So good to know. I never, I never knew that, but I'm learning so much tonight. This is, this is amazing. <laughs> this is a selfish episode. I get to yes. learn everything I want. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Speaking of, of learning and lessons, what lessons have you learned? And I'm gonna just gonna broaden this to just content creation in general. What lessons have you learned during your journey in this content creation field that you have taken into other aspects of your life? One of the biggest things that content creation has taught me, and I say this countless of times, and I even made a tweet about it relatively recently. Everyone who comes through to support your streams, support your content, support your work, they do not deserve every bit of energy of you. And I say that because some people will support you purely just to gain off of your success or try and basically make themselves look better just because they know you. But they can have your name, they can support you, they can come through all the time and say, you know, I've been there since day one, Mm -hmm. but they will turn your back on you in a heartbeat. Like they will literally just either take your content and use it as their own, or they will, you know, backstab you in terms of just not wanting to give credit where credit is due right. when it comes to different concepts or like people who kind of helped you grow in that sort of area. And so like one of the biggest things that I'm keen on is like people who help build me up and help me put, you know, put me where I'm at right now. I'm forever grateful to Jeliana 867 mm-hmm. um, I'm forever grateful to Love Mora. Heck, I'm even ever for, uh, forever grateful to Onsta Monsta just because I know I wouldn't even be here without their love and support Right. with a lot of the things that I've done in the VTubing community and just to kind of like get that kind of like eyes and mindset on me. Mm-hmm. And it's just like, I'm not saying this to be mean or anything of that nature. It's right. just like in content, in the world of content creation, it's a lot of competitive vibes True. amongst others because everybody is trying to make it in this industry. And yes, it can be fun. Yes, you can share laughs and ha- build, you know, community that you can call your own and gain tons of friendships and connections that are everlasting and, you know, just remarkable. Like you, it feels like you can be yourself around them. Mm-hmm. 
but still be very vigilant about who's in your circle and who is truly going to be there for you and not like I listened to the podcast earlier today, fake friends right. that are only there just for your money, just for your success, just for whatever you have that can give them some sort of benefits and gain just because they see where, where you're at right then and there. So, and the more eyes you get on you, the more you kind of have to really dissect and depict mm -hmm. who is actually there for you versus just to gain from you. Exactly. Yeah. I think that is a perfect lesson to have learned, not only in content creation, but for those still stuck in corporate America, you can take that to the office yes. as well. Yes, indeed. <laughs> There's always someone looking to one up their their selves by getting over on other people. And unfortunately, that's just that's just the way the world works. You just again be vigilant, watch your surroundings and take care of who you bring into your inner circle. Dope. Well, I think this is the best place to plop this down as any uh words of advice. Blaze, if someone came to you asking for advice before they jumped into content creation or they may have just started content creation and was just looking for some advice. What type of advice would you provide them? Just post it. Yes. Just post it. <laughs> even, even if you think it's so like, if you're video editing, if you're Photoshopping an image, putting together a meme and you think, no, nah, this isn't going to do numbers. Just post it. Mm -hmm. Please do that. Don't be shy in this industry. Like, just get your name out there the best way that you can. Post any kind of silly content, any kind of entertaining content, whatever that makes you happy. Just please post it. And I say this because I can tell one more story on here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so one of the things, and also if if you come across something negative, turn it into a positive. That's another I like tip that. that I would like to provide to masses because one thing that happened to me recently on Twitch was I had a clip on my channel called Lamo. And what Lamo is, I was reading a dialogue in the Ace Attorney series, mm -hmm. uh, where there is a character that was using leet speech. And so he had said, and I quote, WTF, who are Jew dudes? And because I read LMAO <laughs> as a word, yes. I said LAMO yes. with my whole chest. And so many of my community members lost their shit oh, yeah, I see when why. they heard that. Yeah, yeah, I would have lost my shit. <laughs> and too. they clipped it and it gained, I want to say it was like 140 views on Twitch. And this clip had been on there for like, I want to say two to three years. Mm. And somewhere between that and my transition over to VTubing. Twitch deleted it. What? Twitch deleted wow. it. Yes. I, well. I don't know what happened to it, but I looked up and I tried to click on the clip. The link to the clip was gone. It said it's in another castle. And I'm like, how y'all going to delete my most liked clip on my own channel? That's and it crazy. didn't violate any regulations mm. in terms of services. Mm -hmm. And so... I woke up heated. I woke up mad right. and I was like, okay, luckily I saved off a highlight of that entire stream. Okay, good. And so I could go back and still clip it. Right. And I also downloaded the clip like a while ago that I could refer to. And so I said, well, since I can't trust Twitch anymore to keep my clips, I'm going to create a YouTube channel. Um, and upload my clips there. Any kind of memorable ones, mm -hmm. I'm just going to throw them out there. Like, I don't care if it gets any eyes. I just want to be able to keep the memories. So it basically became my archive channel. Right. Probably within, like, I want to say eight days, if not like a month and eight days. Okay. I had uploaded a clip called Gimme Your Foot. <laughs> and it was basically me using my VTuber model, and I was actually speaking with a previous guest that's been on your your podcast, um, Callista. Oh, yeah. And <laughs> I, 
I want to say it was it was an inside joke between us because they had used an emote where it was a character that was sniffing a foot. Okay. And so as a joke, I was just like, give me your foot. And I got up very close on the screen and I just basically started sniffing. Um, <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> and then I backed away and I'm just like, mm, the stench of curse. Oh and then my community, of course, just saw that as completely cursed. And so they have a feature in my stream to where they can pelt me with a ton of plushies. Oh, yeah. And so it's just a bunking feature where it's just like, I say something out of pocket, that's what they're going to do. I love it. And so I uploaded that clip on YouTube. Within three to eight days of uploading that clip, it went from almost zero views to 200 views Good. to 300 views okay. to 1,000 views <laughs> to, at the time of this podcast, mm -hmm. 5,000 in point six k views. Wow. For some random clip uh, from your stream. For some random clip of me, quote unquote, sniffing someone's foot. And while <laughs> I thought that clip would not do numbers, a lot of people who have now found my Twitch stream mm -hmm. because of that clip that I posted out there. And there's been a couple of other clips that I posted wow. out there that has done numbers that people are just like, oh, wow, I had to come by because I saw you do X, Y, and Z on YouTube. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, that's how you found you hear me. That? You hear that? Post it. Just post it. Post it. So clip. just post it. Post it. Post it on TikTok, YouTube, wherever. Just post it. Somebody it. out there most likely will consume that content. Hey, as someone who's been posting every day for the last, like, two weeks, like, it's crazy how random your your clips just like go into the network and people just show up i don't understand it i don't know what the algorithm is doing but this is a, once again proof post your content that's how people get you on twitch exactly good lord speaking of which blaze where can the people find you and your content where would you like to navigate the masses to you can first and foremost find me on twitch I will be VTubing over there. Um, you can also find me on Twitter to stay up to date. Um, it's not spelled the same way. It's unfortunately spelled as M I, like the midnight part is spelled M I D N I T E. Okay. Because Twitch hates long characters, apparently. You can find me on YouTube. I have three YouTube channels my clips, my VODs, and my main channel. Nice. You can also find me on VStream, which is an up and coming VTubers only Twitch like platform okay. so you can sh you can see me streaming over there and also i do have a blue sky which i jokingly call uh b skeety B because <laughs> the folks over listen the folks over at blue sky messed up when they said they're gonna call their tweets skeets oh so now well it's yep skeety. they they brought that upon themselves yep wow Blue so, skeety. Be skeety, everyone. <laughs> gotcha. Awesome. Well, as always, people, if you know anyone who can benefit from conversations like these and more conversations between creators, share this podcast with them. Upload it and unfiltered. You can do a Google search for it. I'm pretty sure I'm the only thing out there, which I I don't know if that's true, but if it is, that's awesome. Leave me a review. Uh, leave me a comment, <laughs> please. Again, thank you for doing the podcast with me. I had a bunch of fun. I learned so much information. I love to see my friends prosper. There was a time there where I, you took, I, I don't know if you was taking a break or what, whatever was going on in life. I noticed you were uh, streaming, but then you came back with the avatar. I was like, oh, oh, she's back, <laughs> back. And it's a the the vibes are the same like your energy shines through your avatar like you mentioned the facial features and the way that you reacted like i still feel that through your avatar so whatever you're doing you're doing an amazing job and keep up the good work thank you i appreciate it you're welcome as always if you are out there struggling with self-doubt or anything of that nature know that the reality that you have is the one that you create so if you want something dope just think it just believe that's your reality and i believe that it's gonna happen that way but as always protect your mental keep creating content and i will see y'all in the next one peace <laughs>